Yeah. Oh, it doesn't look very good, this coffee that I had to make for myself. I also just got powder everywhere. Yeah. <gasps> oh my god. Who doesn't close the lid? You. So what now, hazelnut is your new favorite? Yeah. But I'll take vanilla. It's better than what I got. Oh, wow, maybe it's a good cup of coffee after all. Subpar. Yuck. All right, well, the weekend is officially ruined because my barista quit on me on the best day of the weekend, the day of the Lord, he quit on me. Hey, on the seventh day he rested. Literally got powder everywhere. I see it, it's all over the counter too. <sighs> Sad morning for all involved. No, no, it's okay, I'm not gonna waste it. I get to be yelled at by Freshie. Oh, where are you going? Okay. It's fine with me. It's a very slow day, a very slow Sunday, and admittedly, most of our Sundays have been slow this winter, but the sun is out. I'm just trying to live, you know, and the sun is never out, so let there be light. It is 11.51, I haven't worked out, but I did my morning routine. I read this book that Mike bought me called A Gentle Reminder. We could talk about it in a second. And then I read, I finished my book, I finished Remember to Write by Sarah, Goodman, Confino, I'm pretty sure. I will link it down below. I'm a little upset with how it ended. I think I'm not gonna give it away because it was a really great book, highly recommend. A great first book to kick off the year. The goal of mine this year is to read a book per month. I'm gonna read Britney Spears's, what is it? Is it called a biography? Memoir? I don't know, but I'm gonna go pull it out of my closet so I will show it to you. But maybe we do like a book club. Uh, what are your thoughts? So I read Remember to Write, which again, loved the book, the ending. It was like a big cliffhanger at the end. Now I'm going to make some toast. This has just been the toast that I've been eating. Mike's on the Peloton for the first time. He finally bought shoes for the Peloton bike. We've had the Peloton for three years. Mike bought it for me for Christmas. I think like three Christmases ago. I love it. I use it twice a week. I only do Cody Rigsby classes. So yeah, and I do it on the days that I wash my hair because I've been really trying to wash my hair twice a week more often because I get the, the like flake buildups, disgusting. But we talked about it in my last vlog and if you're someone that has like dandruff that isn't really dandruff, go to my last vlog and check out how I remedy that. But Mike's on the Peloton, so he's using the gym. I'm a little weird because I don't really, I used to go to the gym a lot, like five, six days a week. And then I moved in with my husband. I have not been to a gym since. And because of that, I just feel weird like working out around other people. I know that's so weird, especially because I film most of my workouts and I put them, I put them in my vlogs. And if you follow me on Instagram, I put them on my Instagram almost like every other day. I put whatever workout I'm doing just because I like to share. I find that when I see other people being active, it inspires me to be more active. And I want that for you guys, not for the aesthetics of being active, but for the mental clarity. I think it's important and that's something that I like sharing. So I like filming it, but I just, I don't like working out in the same room as other people, even my husband. So I'm gonna let him work out. I'm gonna have a snack. Maybe I'll do a little facial massage, which is something that I've been doing with my hands recently, trying to avoid getting Botox because I really don't wanna get Botox, but I also don't want my face to start sagging. So it, it is an ongoing um, thing. But let's make some brunch, I guess, cause it's like 12 o'clock.
I started following Anastasia, Anastasia, beauty, fas fascia, I don't know, but you guys know, I watch Tati Westbrook. I watch her videos all the time here on YouTube. She stopped getting Botox fillers and is going the more natural route. And I think she's like, I think she just turned 40. She's like my internet older sister. So I listen to all the things that she does. And she is literally like my beauty guru. As you guys know, I haven't gotten Botox. I got it once. I don't want to really ever get it again. So I'm trying to just do more natural ways. And so basically Anastasia teaches women how to do facial massages. And it's been so interesting to learn. I never really thought about how the muscles on the face are connected to the muscles around our scalp and like our neck. I don't know anything about it. I'm just following her tutorials, but it's like so interesting to hear that like by massaging a muscle, in the back of your head that relieves tension from like your forehead pulling down which creates those horizontal wrinkles i don't know i do like a 10 minute facial massage every day so i highly recommend anastasia i will put her channel down below if you want to check it out but i'm just going to sit here give myself a facial massage and kind of just enjoy my sunday this is just a hang out with me on a lazy Sunday, hang out with me at home and just do all the beauty things, do all of the prep for the week that makes my week less stressful. So that is exactly what we're doing. And I'm gonna work out at some point, but you guys are gonna be with me along the way. Thanks so much for joining me. And if you follow like any facial massage people on the internet, be sure to share them with me because I'm really interested. It's a little, more than anything, it's just eye-opening. So I have been just like kind of lifting my face more and like rubbing my head more. And it feels nice taking the time to put into myself, you know what I'm saying? And also it is really relaxing, like regardless of whether or not this prevents <laughs> wrinkles and sagging, like it relieves tension mentally. Does that make sense? So I'm gonna do this one. She has a nine minute hooded eye and eyebrow lift, which I would love, honestly. Need extra attention to the back of the neck. You're going to do it until you feel the heat and increased temperature in your scalp. Slowly, don't let this eyebrow go. It's not about pressing into my head, it's about giving enough of power to hold this eyebrow as high as I can. And then you vibrate this towards your scalp. Three deep circles, vibrate and lift. Top of corrugator and wiggle here. Great. Very visible side to side difference. Let's do the same on the second side. Hold here and it's your living body. Be nice to it. And one more. Melt and lift. Melt and lift. As the veins start popping, it's totally normal because we increase the blood flow right now. It's actually approved that we- I'm gonna link the exact video that I did down below. My eyebrows are lifted and they're way more even. It just feels like really good and it's very relaxing. I've been wearing a bit more makeup recently. I don't wear makeup every day. I do like to let my skin breathe. And to be honest, I'm just lazy on some days, but I have really been trying to pull myself together a little bit more. And that doesn't mean that I put a lot of makeup on. I'm literally doing the bare minimum here today. So I just took my NYX concealer and I'm just using that as a foundation and a concealer all over my face with my hourglass brush. It gives a really, really natural finish and it feels very lightweight on the skin. Now I'm taking my Merit Terracotta blush 
it's kind of a better bronzer shade for me so i'm using it to kind of just warm up the skin a little bit again in a very natural way i'm this is definitely a no makeup makeup look my red blush in stockholm i'm just going to apply that to the apples of my cheeks in a stamping pressing motion i love this blush it is very natural looking and i honestly think if there are three things one needs no actually let's make it four four things one needs in their makeup routine it's a concealer a bronzer a blush a brow gel those are the things that make me feel the best about myself everything else i could probably live without i know lipstick is not on there but i don't know i'm just like lipstick is not really my number one lover anymore but my brows have been very important to me recently I think it's a part of my grieving process. I've talked about this, but I have big brows like my dad and I've just been trying to embrace them. So I'm filling them in again here. At first I filled them in with my Merit Brow Gel, if you guys saw a second ago, and now I'm just using a brow pencil to just kind of shape them and make them a bit more even. I have very non-symmetrical, what's the word, asymmetrical brows. So I just like to use a pencil to make them a bit more sister friendly. Um, make them look more like sisters rather than very distant cousins. A little bit of powder just to set. My face is very shiny, which I don't mind. I like a dewier face, but I don't like when the center of my face is shiny. It makes me look like I'm sweating. I recently found this two-way blush duo. Oh my god. I bought this for my wedding. Forgot I had it. I actually had it in like a big makeup kit that I never unpacked, and it's so good i love both of the shades it's very natural but packs a pigment i will link everything that i'm using down below but i'm so happy that i found this and i really really hope that they still sell it i always say nars bronzer their laguna bronzer is the best powder bronzer it's so natural and it makes you look so sun-kissed and then this is discontinued, I know that, but I haven't used this in a long time. This is the MAC Mademoiselle highlight. It's just like a champagne pink highlight, but it's so natural and it packs such a punch. And that is the finished makeup. Look at these flowers that Mike bought me the other day. I came home to flowers at night after work, cooked dinner, and he bought me this really cute book that I told you guys about. I think it's like gentle reminders or be gentle with yourself. I was spoiled that day. And that's our new vase because Mike broke the vase. Remember? Oh, I don't know if I told you. We had a vase. He had it forever. Knocked it over, shattered it into a million pieces, but his mom bought him this new one, which is so nice and I love it. It's so pretty. What did you open this door with your hands all sticky? Uh, maybe I had honey on my hands. Okay, well the doorknob is sticky. Why is it me? I don't think it was I me didn't though. I the door. I didn't, oh, I, no. I didn't have anything sticky on my hands today. Mm -hmm. And B, I didn't open the door with anything on my hand, so, I mean, it sounded like you copped to it. Can I have an orange? Do you want me to peel that orange for you? No. That's not an orange, that's a tangerine. Yeah, it's a baby orange. It, it's a tangerine. Yeah. They're called different things for a reason. I agree. This is probably the 300th time I have made this banana bread. I will link the recipe down below. But when I tell you that I make this every season, no matter the season, this is just my, this is my Betty Crocker moment, okay? I'm not the best cook, although I have been cooking a lot more lately. I am not the best baker, but for some reason, this banana bread is the best banana bread I have ever had. And I take great I take great pride in my banana bread. So, I mean, it's not like the healthiest, but it uses more natural ingredients. At least that's what I tell myself. Like instead of white sugar, we use honey. You know, there's your typical eggs. I don't know. In my in my mind, eggs are good for you because like protein. But I don't know. The only downside about the banana bread is that it takes a lifetime to cook in the oven. I put it on 325, which is a pretty low temperature, but that I've tried other temperatures and this is the best temperature for the banana bread. So I bake it on 325 and sometimes it takes like upwards of an hour to bake, but it's just kind of annoying because I put it in for 15 minutes, I check it and then I usually, it takes about an hour and then some, I just check it by putting a toothpick in, making sure that it's done. But guys, this banana bread is like my thing. 
my signature banana bread and you're welcome because it's not really my banana bread I got it off the internet so I'm sharing the recipe I think it's by like Cookie and Kate mm, I've talked about it before you guys are probably like sick of seeing me make this banana bread but honestly this is like what I do on most Sundays and yeah I just wanted to show you guys like a chill realistic what I do on a Sunday talk over voiceover I was just having a chill day, prepping myself mentally and spiritually for the week ahead because I've been dealing with a lot of anxiety lately, so I just wanted to fill my Sunday as I try to fill most of my days with the things that make me happy and make me feel more at peace. So this is the lovely, delicious banana bread, and I think I actually baked her for about... I want to say like an hour and seven minutes this time. Wait, can you repeat that? Johnny's father has five sons. Zaza, Z-A-Z-E. Okay, Zaza. Z-Z-Z-E-Z-E. Z -E -Z -E. Z -Z -E. Zoze, Z-O-Z-E. What is the name of the fifth son? You only said four though. Right, you have to give me the fifth son's name. Oh, babe. Let's do it again. Tell me the names. Zaze. Zaze. Zay Zay. Zay Zay. Z Zay. Z Zay. Zoze. Jose. No. I don't know. Come here. Come here and read this. Oh. Z Z Z Z Z. A E I O U. What's the first one I said? Johnny's father. Johnny's the fifth kid. Johnny's father. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> That's so annoying. You want to know who the cook in my house is? My husband. When I tell you that these were the best chicken cutlets I have ever freaking had, they were absolutely delicious. And when I tell you also that when we go out to dinner, I never order steak because no one makes a steak like my husband, that is the truth. My sister-in-law Amanda bought us this Oberon wine. It's delicious. I will link it down below. Very big fan. So this is me enjoying my chicken cutlets with yellow mustard and wine. This is like the meal of dreams, honestly, the meal of dreams. I'm standing by the oven waiting for my damn banana bread to be done. I feel like the days that I make banana bread, I'm just forever waiting on the banana bread. Fun fact about me, I used to get fake long nails. I used to have like acrylic nails, like Khloe Kardashian, for years and years and years. And then COVID happened and I never got acrylics again. In fact, I think I've only gotten a manicure about three times since 2020, but I have just been saving my money. It's not really about the money though. It's more so about the fact that I hate sitting in the nail salon and getting my nails done and no one ever shapes my nails the way that I want them to be shaped. I'm a little bratty with my nails, but clearly not because I end up doing them at home. So this is my at-home manicure. If you want like full on details, let me know because I really don't want to bore you but I do my nails about once every 10 days. That's how long it normally lasts my nails before they start to look like really ratchet, but I am an avid OPI nail polish user. If you have a nail polish, like at home, regular regular nail polish that you use, can you please let me know down below in the comments because the quality is crap. Like I buy OPI nail polish all the time and some of them are great and then some of them are terrible. Some of them will stay on my nails for the full 10 days and then others will start peeling. This one's actually pretty good. This is OPI Chopsticks and Stones. It's a really, really pretty blue color and it has sparkles in it, but it's a very subtle sparkle. It's not like a uh, juvenile sparkle. Um, but yeah, so that's what I use. And then also, I also need a top coat. So if you have a good top coat, let me know. I was using LA Colors, their top coat, but it kind of started doing that thing where it gets like really gloppy and then it doesn't cover the whole nail and then it starts to move the paint underneath. So yeah, please just leave me any nail polish recommendations. I use OPI and I use Olive and June mainly. Um, I would say Olive and June is better than OPI at this current moment in my opinion. But again, I would love to hear the different brands that you use so I can check them out. Wow, what a beautiful bread. Previously on Southern Hospitality. You're a liar. You're a liar. You told me 
All right, let's pack my work bag for tomorrow so that I don't have to do it in the morning. I can enjoy my time reading, writing, and doing all of the good things for me. I like to pack my pochette every Sunday night with whatever it is I feel like playing with. Hand cream. Last week I brought my Estee Lauder. Just like a like a tinted bomb. I'm not gonna bring that this week though. Perfume. I always keep this in here. Keep toothpicks for Michael. I have two lip liners. Oh, I was looking for this. Iconic Nude by Charlotte Tilbury and London by NYX. I don't need two perfumes, so let's go ahead and finish off Replica. I think this is, yep, Lazy Sunday Morning. I'll put Gucci Bloom back. Little comb. Mints. Not mints. Yeah. Listerine strips. All right, I'm going to put my toothpicks, my hand cream, Replica. I think I'm going to take Fussy with me this week for my lip gloss just because I've been really enjoying it. Let's take... NYX in London. And then let's take a lipstick. I don't know. Which one do I want to take? Let's take Pillow Talk. I haven't worn Pillow Talk in a minute. All right, so now that she's packed, I can put her in my backpack. I'll just go ahead and clean off my vanity so that it's nice and clean in the morning when I wake up and I don't get overwhelmed. I don't like clutter. To be honest, I've been very, very lazy in the skincare department. I make sure I take off my makeup every single night, but my steps have become, I would say they probably went from like six steps to like, I don't know what feels like three steps. So I'm just using my Shiseido oil cleanser and I'm going to use that to break down my makeup. If you guys have watched my skincare vlog, that literally tells you all the things that I do for my skin. I did double cleanse, but I forgot to include that. So I used my Neutrogena cleanser that I spoke about in that vlog that I mentioned. But tonight I'm doing my Jutsi routine. So I'm taking my... Oh, I forgot the name of this. I forgot the name of this. And when I am doing this voiceover, it is literally 6.05 in the morning. And Michael is still sleeping. So I will leave the oil down below but i forgot the name of it i love it so much and i'm a little upset that i forgot now i'm using my kiehl's cloud cream again I, this is like the third jar of this that i've gone through um really nice it doesn't pair well with a lot of things it pairs well with the serum that i just used and it also pairs well with my kiehl's midnight recovery serum but my my retinol serum no it's just it's a little finicky so it pairs best with hydrating serums but i do really love this cream and then i used to really love this eye cream i don't did they change the formula on this but this is the glow recipe avocado retinol eye cream it's not bad I just remember being a lot better. And yeah, that is it. I am nice and clean and my skin looks jutsy and I didn't use too many products. All right, guys, I'm gonna wrap it up here. I just marinated my face. I'm ready to crawl into bed. Um, I do wanna just put out my workout clothes for tomorrow so that I don't have to think about it in the morning and I can take like those few extra minutes to read or write throwing some Vaseline on my lips because quite honestly, in the dead of winter, this is what works the best. I kind of just wanted to upload this as a reminder that some days we need to take it easy, not only just a reminder for you, but also for myself. I talked about this a lot recently, but I'm putting a lot of pressure on myself to go, go, go and get things done. And some days we just need like a chill Sunday like I had today. It was nice to wake up late for once and not feel like super guilty. And it wasn't funny. I kind of felt bad for Mike because I knew the feeling, but he, we both slept until like nine o'clock today. So he felt kind of guilty, I think, wasting the day, even though, you know, he only missed three hours in the morning, but I get it because when you wake up and you get things done, you feel more accomplished at the end of the day. And that's nice. And I should have put my light on here. Is that better or is that worse? I don't know. I bought one of these lights. So hopefully we will up the quality of my videos. But yeah, so Mike felt a little guilty about waking up late and 
that I feel like sometimes when you sleep too much, you know, you're just groggy the whole day. So that was him. But for me, I felt bad for him. But for me, this was the first time in a really long time that I slept late and I didn't feel guilty about it. And I genuinely felt and believed in my heart that I deserved it. So this is just a reminder that we all need a break sometimes. Sometimes we need to slow down in order to get to the next level of life, the next whatever it may be. You know, we need to take care of ourselves because if we don't take care of ourselves and our health and our mental health, then we can't push to the next stage. Thanks so much for spending this Sunday with me. I'm sorry if this was a shorter video or maybe wasn't jam-packed with as many exciting things as it could be. Although, let's be real, we sit at home most of the time here on my channel. Um, but I love you guys so much. I hope that you are taking care of yourself and I really hope to see you in my next one. Bye guys. Mwah.